Good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining us for worship today. The bulletin for today's service, as always, is on our website, stjohncarnegie.com. Also, you can subscribe to our e-news there if you have not yet done so. That's a good way of keeping in touch with everything going on. As always, this week, Monday through Friday, we offer lunch to any child under the age of 18 from noon until 1, and on Fridays, we have groceries available. Coming up this week, our Adult Ed series on the Book of Acts is on Monday at noon. Please call in or dial in to our Zoom site. Email me if you need that information. We'll have a moment of silence before we begin. Is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In our Easter joy for resurrection, let us confess our sin and brokenness to the one who was broken for us and who raises us to new life in his own body. Eternal Spirit, living God, in, in whom, whom we live and move and have our being, all that we are is known to you. Even, even in the secrets of our hearts, you, you know all that rises to trouble us. Some sins are plain to us, some escape us, some we cannot face. We have wounded your love, O oh God, heal us. We stumble in the darkness, light of the world, transfigure us. We forget that we are your home, Spirit of God, dwell in us. God forgives you, forgive others, forgive yourself. Through Christ, God has put away your sin. Return to the Lord with joy. Let us pray. O God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Acts of Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know what certainly that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. 
and he testifies with many of the other arguments and extorted them, saying, Save yourself from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and the day about 3,000 were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. God. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given you to me whenever I call. The crowds of death entangle me. The anguish of my grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I call upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you save my life. How shall I reply, the Lord, for all of the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in presence to God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaiden, so you freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will faithfully fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of God's people. In the courts of, of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, O, o Jerusalem, hallelujah. A reading from the first letter from Peter. If you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, Love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of an imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on that same day when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, Why are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place here in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. 
Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer all these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made, made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The road to Emmaus is seven miles from Jerusalem. Not a whole day, but a pretty long walk. Long enough for Cleopas and his friend to walk, maybe hesitantly, maybe wondering if perhaps they should have stayed in the city. They must have wondered what more would happen there. We can imagine them passing lots of people different people, all of whom had their own stories and their own journeys to consider. Maybe they talked to some of them, maybe not. One of their fellow travelers on this road, though, is different. This one comes up and walks with them, gently curious about them and their lives. They don't know who he is, but they take pity on him because it seems like he is the only one who doesn't know what has happened. The tragedy of the passion, the suffering, the teaching of Jesus, the parade into Jerusalem, the fatal end. They stand still. They are talking and walking, and when they get to this story, they stop. They stand still to tell the story, shocked again at what has happened. They tell all the pain and suffering and grief. They tell their friend about the marvelous story they heard from the women in their group about an empty tomb and visions of angels. The disciples went to the tomb where Jesus had been. They didn't believe what the women said. They saw that it was empty, but they experienced no resurrection. They could not find him in the place of the dead. He goes to find them. Jesus, risen from the dead, finds the disciples, and they don't recognize him. This is not the only time this happens. Mary herself thinks that he's the gardener. This, of course, is not a problem that only plagues those first believers. This happens to us as well. So what makes the difference? What makes us get it? Why did they suddenly see Jesus? Sometimes the power of resurrection, of knowing that Christ is near, happens in relinquishing control. Sometimes it's getting to the end and just stopping and not trying to enforce your own will on a situation. Just letting it be, letting yourself feel how you feel, letting reality be what it is, no matter how you might wish for things to be otherwise. I imagine the gentle listening that the risen Christ offered Cleopas and his friend. They told their story in some ways to take pity on this confused stranger, but of course they needed to tell it. They needed to recount the wonder of their community and ministry with Christ. They needed to admit the depth of their sadness. We need to tell our stories. There's something else that happens, though, at that table in Emmaus once they finally get here, when they insist that Jesus stay with them. That was true for Cleopas and his community, and it's true for us. Author Marianne Suwicki says, in fact, in the Gospel of Luke, 
again and again, as it is told, the thing that opens people's eyes to the risen Christ, it's one thing, it's hunger. It's in being hungry, in recognizing hunger in others, in feeding them, that is the place where Jesus is known. Right now, I am finding that to be true as well. I feel hunger toward missing sharing communion with all of you at our altar here. I see Christ when I see people getting fed. There's a girl who comes to our lunch program here with her dad, and he always hangs back in the hall, and she walks up to the table with this amazing mix of both confidence and shyness that seems peculiar to young girls. She tells me what kind of sandwich she wants, and she always pulls out her own bag. She is prepared for what there is for her. Plain milk, not chocolate. Christ is risen. I see Christ in the 100 loaves of bread we get here from Indigo's Kitchen on West Main Street. The chef there, Alexandra, is charging us hardly anything for her work. She gives food to Bethlehem Haven shelter and healthcare workers. I see Christ with Jack Kavistic, who makes sure that seniors in our local apartments have the food that they need. I see Christ with all of the volunteers from different churches, from St. Paul's, Char Valley, Carnegie, Presbyterian, Good Shepherd, people coming together to feed one another. Christ, Christ in those who cannot come out, Christ in those who are at home, and Christ in those who do. Christ in our need for each other, Christ with those who are hard to be with, Christ before, beneath, and below us. Christ, as we discover the difference between real hunger and transient wishes. It seems in this time we have an opportunity to think harder about what it is that we need. What really do we need? What is the real cost of the quick buy? What happens in the lives of those workers who don't get paid sick time? That looks quite different when all of our health depends on each other. Christ is present when people are fed. Christ is present when we know our hunger. Christ is present with Cleopas and his friend on the road, whether they recognize him or not. We are carried through tragedy, not because things are no longer tragic, but because the life of God brings light and love to every tomb. Even, as Jesus puts it, when we are foolish and slow of heart. Jesus finds us on the road whether we are looking or not. He keeps walking with us even when we don't know him. This week my prayer for you, for all of us, is that our eyes are opened. We may not know Christ today in the breaking of the bread at the altar, but we will meet him on the road. Amen. the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For those who heart, whose hearts are fervent with love for your gospel, that they are empowered to tell the story of your love in their lives and to show hospitality in response to this love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the diverse natural world, for jungles, prairies, forests, valleys, mountains, and for all the wild and endangered animals who call these spaces home, that they are nurtured and protected. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For broken systems we have inherited and that we continue to perpetuate, forgive us. Restrain the nations from fighting over limited resources. Redeem us from the cycles of scarcity and violence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who call upon your healing name, give rest. Stay with us and walk with all those who are hungry, friendless, despairing, and desiring healing in body and spirit, and those who have asked for our prayers, remembering Joyce, Evie, Jan, Eileen, Janice, Charlotte, Stephen, Mark, Brandon, Michael, Bob, Shirley, George, Margie, Scott, Barbara, Tony, Marin, Mike, Glenn, Peggy, Rosalind, Kim, Karen, Natalie and Brandon, Cindy's family, the Noak family, Joe, Dr. Walsh, those who travel, who serve in the military and law enforcement and as first responders, and those we name now. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our people and our strength, our peace and our strength, we pray for our nation, in the world as we face new uncertainties around coronavirus. Protect the most vulnerable among us, especially all who are currently sick or in isolation. Grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to all healthcare workers, especially as their work caring for others puts them at great risk. Guide us as we consider how best to prepare and respond in our families, congregations, workplaces, and communities. Give us courage to face these days, not with fear, but with compassion, concern, and acts of service, trusting that you abide with us always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the faith-forming ministries of this church, for those preparing for baptism, First Communion, confirmation, and membership, for those who participate in Sunday school and adult education, guide and inspire learners of every age and ability. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Create in our hearts a yearning to rest in your promise of eternal and resurrected life. Give us thankful hearts for those who have died, even as we look forward to the hope of new life with you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise us to new life, fill us with hope, and turn our mourning into dancing. Almighty God, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.